Hello everybody. So the other day I put out a video called Procreate for Beginners and it got a really good response. So today I'm going to be telling you more tips about Procreate or something like that. I'm not really sure I haven't come up with a title, but either way, I have 10 tips here. I'm gonna show you, let's get into it. Oh wait, 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 we can't start the video yet. I forgot to mention, I will have shirts available for sale within the next couple weeks. So if you don't already follow me on Instagram, make sure you go do that. I will be posting on my story. When it's coming close to the time to them being released, I will also have it in these videos. But yeah, if you are going to want a shirt, I just designed them yesterday. Here, I'll show you the design really quick. It says, I'd rather be getting tattooed. And then it says quarantine 2020, right below the gas mask and seven trumpet tattoos. So yeah, they should be ready really soon. I'm excited about them. I think they're gonna be $15 each. So yeah, now that you know about that, onto the video. All right, so tip number one is actually something that I forgot to mention in the first video when I spoke about stacks. If you haven't seen the first video, I will link it above so you can go watch it. It's not necessary to go watch the first video to understand this one, but the first video does have 15 helpful tips on how to operate Procreate. So the first tip I'm gonna mention is about stacks. If you click up here on this select tab, you're able to select multiple projects at once. So say you want these two projects in a stack, you can select as many as you want, and then all you have to do is go up here and press stack and all of them will go into a stack instead of individually dragging over each project on top of each other. This is just a much more efficient way to do that. Now in this select menu you also have a couple other options. You can select multiple projects to either preview, share, duplicate, or delete. But in order to get out of that menu you just press this little X icon and you're back to the normal home screen. So tip number two I discovered on accident. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. I call it the color picker. It's this little box over here. It's located in between the opacity and brush size sliders. And basically, say you use this color and then you switched over to a different color and you don't remember where this color was on the actual color wheel. Don't panic, you have the color picker. So all you do is click this little box and this target pops up. And it has these little crosshairs in the middle to where you're able to hover over different colors. And right now it goes from white to this green. So if you don't know where you got this green color from up in your palette, all you have to do is use this, drag over it, let go and now that color is selected and you can use it. This could be really useful when you're doing a really big color project and you might not have added a color that you want it in your palette. So yeah, tip number two, the color picker. And now that we're talking about colors and selecting your palette, tip number three is how to save colors to your palette. So say this is the orange that you want and you really like it and you wanna save that to your palette. All you have to do is come down here and click an empty spot on the palette and it'll save that orange right where you click it. Now, if you accidentally add a color to your palette, all you have to do is hold on that block and delete it. You can also clear your history of colors by clicking right there. Now, if you have a hard time picking colors that contrast with each other and that work together really well, my brain works in black and gray and I'm good at simple color, but when you get too far into picking colors that contrast each other, I am not very good at it. That's definitely an area that I have to work on. But tip number four is how to pick contrasting colors when you really don't know what to pick. And that is by going down here in this harmony selection in the color selector. Now, what this does is basically you pick a color that you like and it shows you a color that contrasts with it. Now this option is the complementary color selection tool, but there are other options. So, so all you have to do to pick the other harmony tools is you click on complementary or whatever is right underneath colors. So if you select split complementary, you then have three colors to pick from. You pick a color and it'll show you two colors that are contrasting with it. I really like this because it gives you a darker and a lighter option with the color that you're picking. And you can explore all these other ones. Now, say you really like this purple, but it's just a little bit too bright for you. All you have to do is go down to this slider right here and slide it down a little bit darker and you're able to pick basically the vibrance of the colors that you are selecting. So this harmony tab down here in the color selector is really, really useful. I haven't used it too much, but when I have, it's really, really convenient. I do like this one a lot. So tip number five is spacing out your stroke of your brush to get beads or pearls, basically a chain of perfect circles right in a row. So how to do this is you go up to the brush icon, Select a brush that you wanna use. We'll use the technical pen. And then you click on it again once you've selected it. Now under the stroke path tab, the first slider is the spacing slider. Now all you have to do is slide this up and you'll see over here that the stroke gets farther and farther apart. So you click done and you'll be able to see a bunch of perfect circles right in a row for you to draw with. Now, if those are too far apart, all you do is go back in there and you bring it down a little bit. And now those are perfect circles 
right close together. And then when you want it off, you just go back into the pen settings and go right back to no spacing. So tip number six is how to add text to your project. Now all you have to do to do this is go up to this wrench icon up here, make sure you're in the add tab, go down here to add text, and then type in whatever you want. So I'll just type in procreate. So now once you have your text typed in, you can go to edit style and you can pick a font from over here. Now you can download fonts. I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this video because that's a little bit more of its own video. But Procreate comes loaded with a bunch of really good fonts that you can pick from. You can go through them. Oh, that one's kind of weird. But yeah, you can pick the size, the style, if you want it centered, left or right. You can underline it, you can just get the outline for it. Capitalization for all the letters. So yeah, you can mess around in this text menu and get all types of different effects. I'm not gonna go through every single one, but once you're done doing whatever you need to do, you just click done and there's your lettering. Now, if you spelled something wrong, you just click on it and you're able to edit it. And to go from this menu back to the keyboard, all you have to do is press this button right here and it'll bring you back to the keyboard. To resize your font and move it, all you have to do is go up to this cursor icon and you're able to move it all around. Super easy, super simple. Also, a really cool thing, when you add text, it automatically puts it on a new layer, so you don't have to worry about did you open a new layer or not. Anytime you add text, it always adds it into its own separate layer. So tip number seven is copying and pasting something from another project into your current project. So say you are drawing a smiley face and you really liked a flower that you did in another project, but you don't wanna redraw it in this project. All you have to do is go to gallery. It'll still save your project right here. Go find whatever project you wanna copy a piece out of. Let's say here's a flower. And all you have to do is go up to this S selector icon. I'm gonna go with the freehand option on this one. And say we want these three flowers. You just draw a selection all around the flowers that you want. Complete the selection by hitting that little circle. And now once all the zebra lines are outside of what you've selected, take three fingers and swipe down. Now that'll bring up the copy, cut, paste menu. And all you gotta do is press copy. Go back to gallery, go to your current project that you're working on, open up a new layer by pressing this plus icon, take three fingers and swipe down again, and press paste. And now, there are your flowers from your other project to accompany your smiley face that you're drawing. Okay, so tip number eight is how to use the automatic selection tool. So say what you wanna do is cut this solid black wolf howling at the moon out of this Pinterest page that I took a screenshot of and get rid of the background. All you have to do is go up to this S, the selection tool. Down here when this menu pops up, you click automatic, and all you have to do is click the black. Now this works best with solid silhouetted images like this. It will work with other things, but you will have to kind of tweak it and play around with it. This is the most simple way to do it. So once you have that area selected, you go down here to invert, and then you go up to this cursor icon right here. So then that way you are able to move the background around and get it out of here so you have your sweet wolf Howling at the moon. So say you want the wolf to be flipped around and facing this way. Tip number nine is how to flip an image. All you have to do is go up to this cursor icon. You tell that the image is selected by the dancing ants that are around it. And all you have to do is go down here to this menu that pops up at the bottom. And if you want to flip it horizontally, you click that. Flips it horizontally. If you want to flip it vertical, click there. If you want to rotate it 45 degrees, you go right here. Simple easy and useful. So tip number 10 is how to use the warp tool. So all you have to do is select the area that you wanna work on by clicking the S selection tool. I'm gonna to go over to freehand right now. So I could just select the wolf. Now once he's all the way selected, you just finish the selection by clicking this circle. And once it's selected, you'll see all the zebra stripes outside of it. And then you click the cursor tool. Now from here, you can move it around if you want to. I'm just gonna keep it right here. But to distort the image, you go over here to warp. And once you click the warp tab down here, you get all these different points to where you're able to drag this image and distort it to however you want it to be. So say I wanna bring the tail down a little bit, I'll grab this corner right here and you can move it all around. And I wanna bring his head up a little bit, you can bring this corner up and elongate his head. Now this does distort the image obviously, so if you're moving this up, maybe you wanna take this out so then that way he doesn't lose his chin. So then that way it looks a little bit more, I guess, realistic that you distorted this image of a wolf. So yeah, I will use that warp tool on you know text or if I have a picture that I like but it's not at the exact angle that I want. You are able to change images a little bit. It is limited, 
but it is a very useful tool. So yeah, everybody, I hope that these tips are helping you. I've done two other Procreate videos before this, and it seems like everybody really likes them. I know that's really hard to first learn a new app, especially like Procreate, where it is such a big and vast app that you're able to do so much. You can literally do like the same thing five different ways. That's how complex this app can be. So let me know down in the comments if you want me to keep making Procreate videos. They are pretty fun to make, and they're easy, especially because I am working from home, since the entire world is basically at lockdown. So I brought my overhead rig home, so then this way I can attach my camera to it and do overhead shots like you just saw during this Procreate video. But I hope you are all staying safe out there. And I do wanna know, how many people have gotten the 2020 iPad Pro? Cause I'm still working with the 2018 one and I really don't see a reason to upgrade to it unless you're using a much older model than the 2018 one. It doesn't seem to me like they really put that much more into it than this one. Thank you for watching, share the video, wash your hands, wash your butt, and make sure to wash your face before you wash your butt.